Hi, good morning. This is Irv Shabro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to look at how to turn prints that come right off the print bed that might be full of strings and supports into beautiful, beautiful printed objects. And the tools that I recommend for doing that. Okay, stay tuned and let's learn something together. So there are a variety of types of cleanup that you need to do when you finish with a 3D print. Now, 3D printing is no different than any other manufacturing process. If you make something after out of wood, after you complete it, you sand it and you stain it. That's post-processing. If you make something of injection molding, you have to trim it afterwards. Um, even when you bake a cake, you frost it afterwards. So we shouldn't expect that 3D printed objects will be absolutely perfect when they come off the printer. There are two levels of post-processing you can use with 3D printing. The first is to leave the original material, but just clean up supports and brims and rafts and strings off the object. That's what we're going to talk about today. The next level would be to further sand down, prime and paint those objects, in which case the original plastic is no longer visible. That's going to be for another day. Let's start with a very simple example here. Here you'll see an example of a print, this is actually a calibration print, that is full of stringing. And there are a variety of techniques we could use for removing those strings. We could use a needle nose pliers and carefully um, pull off various strings, but that is a tedious and long process. An alternative is to just use a heat gun. And a heat gun is remarkable at this. What it basically does is it heats up the strings, causing them to retract. And in essence, it makes them seemingly disappear. So we're going to take this object full of strings and we're going to hit it with a blast of hot air from a heat gun. And you will notice that the springs almost completely disappear. Now, there's a side effect here. And that is that it did heat up these tall, very small structures and cause them to begin to melt. So while you can use a heat gun to remove strings very quickly, you have to use it selectively and carefully. In this particular case, we'd need to use a combination of a heat gun and some other mechanism. Let's see here, I could take and use a snip or a horizontal cutter to continue to clean this up. Now, another cleanup that is necessary is to clean up supports. On, in this particular case, this print has a raft on the bottom and supports under these overhangs. Well, the raft generally will pull off directly off the bottom by just carefully bending it as you work your way around the object. So we're going to pull the raft off. And we're actually going to see here that the majority in this case of the supports came off with the raft. So one of the advantages of using a raft is very often the supports will come off with the raft, leaving us with a almost pristine object, really in very, very good condition. Now, there is a bit of um, defects. There are a bit of defects on the bottom of this object. So there are a variety of ways we can use to clean those up. One would be, once again, to go back to our horizontal cutter and to begin cleaning up those defects on the bottom. Another approach we can use for the bottom defects is we can use an emery board that people use for their nails. Uh, and this makes a very nice type of sandpaper for cleaning up because it has a support on it. So we can take and clean up the bottom and in fact, erase all of the defects that way. But there's another very interesting way to clean up models. And in, I'm going to actually use that 
to clean up this raft as if it was a model. So if I wanted to take these particular components off the bottom of the raft, once again, I can just pry them off, but you can see it left quite a bit of material left on there. Now, a common way to clean those off would be to use a small knife and to slice those off, as I did there. You have to be very careful. This is a bit dangerous. You have to be very careful, and it is difficult to get underneath those items. Let's take this other one off here, these other two. And you can see there's still plastic on the bottom here, and if we wanted to remove that, it's pretty hard to get that off. So once again, we could go to sandpaper. We could start snipping those, and this works pretty well. Snipping those, and then pulling them off with our needle nose pliers. But there's a magical tool for cleaning up prints, and I want to show it to you now. That tool, let me put my heat gun aside, get that out of the way. That tool is called a hot knife. Now, this looks like a regular soldering iron. The difference is that a wood burner or a regular soldering iron actually gets too hot for our purposes. Uh, depending on the device, it can go from a few hundred degrees to about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. 212 degrees is approximately 100 degrees centigrade, is exactly 100 degrees centigrade, the temperature that water boils. And you really want your heat gun to go up to about 220 to 250 degrees, depending on the material, maybe 300 degrees centigrade. Um, you don't want to go high, hotter than that. If you go too hot, then you're going to burn or discolor the plastic. So let's put this wood burner away and let's look at this hot knife. Now this is called a hot knife because there are a number of attachments that you can put on the end of this knife. Right now, I actually have a knife blade on the end. Most hot knives are also used for a variety of other craft work, including stamping. So they come with ends that have a variety of shapes. Let's see if you can see this particular shape here. The shapes that I find most useful are these flat shapes because I can use them to remove imperfections from my print. This is the one I use most often. So I can use this in essence to iron the print and smooth out defects. But for right now, let's take, and we're going to use our hot knife. Um, I'm going to uh, turn it on here. And this particular hot knife is temperature controlled. Once again, that's very, very important because if I set it too high, I will actually burn the plastic instead of cutting it or melting it. So I'm gonna set this to about 230 degrees and we'll give it a minute here to come up to temperature. Let's just use it as an example on here to give you an example to see how this cuts. It's basically slicing this like you would slice butter. and you end up with a very, very nice edge when you do that. So this is called a hot knife. Um, it is used in the craft industry. When it comes up to speed, you can see it slices very nicely, just like you're slicing through butter, and you end up with a very nice edge. So we could use that on these spheres here, on the very end to very carefully slice off these strings, the strings that were really not practical to remove with the hot gun because it was melting the spheres. And this is really the best possible way to clean up an object. Okay, I've replaced the knife blade with a flat end here. Let's let this come up to temperature. And once it's up to temperature, 
I can use that to iron surfaces and smooth out completely a surface. Or in essence reshape a surface. So if I wanted to add a bevel on the edge here, I could add a bevel on the edge here because in essence I'm melting or ironing this plastic. Okay, so we've seen a variety of tools that we can use for finishing models. We can use the needle nose pliers for pulling off supports. We can use a diagonal cutter or a snip for snipping off supports. We can use a knife blade directly, or we can use a hot knife with a variety of tips. Right now I have an ironing tip in this hot knife. Finally, for removing strings, we saw that we can use a hot gun a heat gun, you have to be careful because it will melt very uh, delicate features if you're not careful. Oh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let's continue learning things together.